Yep, we see it every night. We've studied it from all sides with the most powerful telescopes. We have walked on its surface and brought its pieces to Earth. The moon seems so familiar, but we still don't know exactly how it appeared. Scientists regularly put forward new theories of the birth of our satellite, and some of them are pretty cinematic. Do you remember Charles Darwin, the guy who introduced the theory of evolution to the world? So his son George also became a scientist. In the 19th century, he suggested a version in which the moon was a piece of a red-hot rotating Earth. According to his hypothesis, at the very beginning of our solar system, Earth looked like a scorching, rapidly rotating ball. Large and small pieces flew off of it in different directions. One of these pieces was so big that it turned into the moon. Small fragments crashed into it and formed many craters on its surface. Most scientists rejected this theory because they didn't believe Earth could rotate fast enough to lose a piece of itself. But a few years ago, researchers discovered that a massive explosion on our planet could have broken off a giant chunk of rock. Some scientists believe that our satellite initially belonged to Venus, but our planet's gravitational pull intercepted the moon. It seems that such a satellite theft is impossible, but it sounds plausible because Mars got two satellites by capturing asteroids flying by with its gravitational force. Since then, Phobos and Deimos have been orbiting the red planet for billions of years. Anyway, this theory was refuted after a careful study of the moon's soil. Our planet and its satellite have the same ratio of oxygen isotopes. In simple words, they have almost the same composition. In 2017, scientists hypothesized that the moon could have appeared as the result of a powerful meteor shower. Giant asteroids crashed into Earth and broke off some pieces. One of them became the moon. This theory explains why Earth and its satellite have a similar soil composition. Large objects constantly collide with one another in space, creating new planets. This theory of the origin of the moon is one of the most plausible versions so far. Now, billions of years ago, when Earth was still forming, when there was no life on it and its surface was like a bubbling chemical boiler, a huge space object the size of Mars crashed into it. This object was called Theia. The unknown planet provoked an energy release a hundred million times greater than the moment of collision with a meteorite that destroyed the dinosaurs. Many scientists claim that the collision with Theia sent many large fragments of our planet into space and they eventually formed the moon. We don't know how exactly this event could have formed our satellite, but such a theory explains similarities between our planet and the moon, and, at the same time, the differences. To see this ancient event, scientists use computer modeling with artificial intelligence. Before that, astronomers thought that the formation of the moon after the collision with Theia had taken several months or years. But the AI calculation showed that the satellite had been formed in a matter of hours. Earth launched Theia into lunar orbit immediately after the impact. Analysis of the lunar soil show that the satellite consists of the material making up the early Earth's crust. It seems that part of Theia is also there. And now, imagine what our planet was like before the collision. That world was much bigger than ours, and there was no glowing satellite in the night sky. By the way, computer simulations also showed that the moon had been much closer to our planet in the past. It took up 10 times more space in the sky. Today, it's floating at a distance of about 240,000 miles from us. Millions of years ago, it orbited Earth at a distance of 18,000 miles. Every year, it goes further away by about an inch and a half. The energy from its rotation, as well as Earth's tides, pushes the satellite away from us. By the way, these tides look like bulges on the planet's surface. The gravitational forces of the Moon attract water from one side of the Earth. Meanwhile, on the other side, gravity weakens, and the water moves in the opposite direction. The Sun's gravity also creates tides, but they wouldn't affect our planet so much without the Moon. So why do we study the origin of the Moon at all? Such research costs millions of dollars, but why do we want to know how our satellite appeared? Scientists are confident that revealing the secrets of the Moon will help us better understand Earth. 
we may get a clearer picture of how life formed on our planet. Fragments of our ancient world are hidden on our satellite. By studying them, we can learn more about our own past. Exploring the moon is necessary not only for history, but also for future scientific experiments. By the beginning of the 2030s of this century, astronauts may set space bases on the moon. They might be like small stations in Antarctica, where people live, monitor the weather and animals, and keep diaries. Just imagine how forlorn scientists will feel on the moon. It will help to find extraterrestrial organic materials and build cooler radio telescopes. On Earth, many studies are hampered by noise from large cities and radiation. But the moon is absolutely silent, and the sky is clear. From there, we can observe the universe much more efficiently and catch cosmic signals. Many people want to go there to live, and someone will probably want to visit our satellite as a tourist. But it's important to remember that the moon is dangerous. It's not protected from meteorites like our planet because it has almost no atmosphere. That's why there are so many craters on it. Studying them allows us to better understand our solar system and even what is beyond it. Who knows where all these meteorites come from? Besides, the moon is both a very cold and hot place. The average temperature during the day reaches 250 degrees Fahrenheit there, and it drops to about minus 208 degrees Fahrenheit at night. This is warmer than the hottest place on Earth and colder than any Antarctic desert. There are about 200 impact craters on Earth. Many of them are covered with water or forests. The Moon has millions of such funnels. At the same time, our satellite is a quiet place, thanks to little seismic activity. It means that many unchanged geological minerals can be found on its surface. On Earth, tectonic plates shift, and volcanic eruptions move rocks. The landscape is constantly changing. The Moon hardly moves and allows us to delve into the most ancient periods of its formation. All this requires vast amounts of data and observations, which is why lunar stations will be necessary for us in the future. Another reason why we should continue to study our satellite is water. NASA has recently discovered some traces of water in its soil. It is still unknown how much of this precious substance is there but it can become an important source of fresh water. With more and more people appearing in the world and the planet's resources running out, the Moon, in this case, can become our plan B. But why then are we trying to colonize distant Mars? Our satellite is as vast as the area of Europe and Africa combined. And there's water there, so what's the problem? Well, the main issue is the satellite's weak atmosphere. In addition to meteorites, the Moon receives dangerous solar and cosmic radiation. That's why the atmosphere of the red planet is much safer. It's not as dense as Earth's, but it still protects better than the atmosphere of the Moon. In addition, water has been discovered on Mars, too. So this may be our only option for colonization in the near future.